Hey there, folks. Been a little while since I've talked about video games, so let's talk about Transistor. This is uh, one of the earlier games by Supergiant Games, and the work of theirs that I've played, I like a lot. I played Bastion a few years ago, which I think was actually their first game. That game's real good. Uh, more recently, I played Hades, which I've sunk a lot of time into and enjoy very, very, very much. And I kind of wanted to go back and go through the rest of their catalog, starting with their follow-up to Bastion, Transistor. Now, like, well, all their games that I've played, I don't know if this is literally every game they've made, but they seem to be very fond of isometric uh, action-style gaming. This is that, again, very interesting art style, uh, a much more oblique story than the games from them that I've encountered. Now, Supergiant Games does story rich. They do that very, very well. But oftentimes they at least start with a much easier to understand premise. Um, you know, when you start Bastion, the world's been destroyed. Try and pull it back together. The specifics you will not find out until later, but that's a starting point. You know that much going in. Hades, escape the underworld. That's your starting premise. Here, you don't know what's going on or why or who you are. So it it takes a little while to wrap your head around it, especially because the um, the story is uh, let's say told in a roundabout fashion. It's not quite like at Dark Souls level where like it's just lore that you have to piece together. There is a bit of that, but they actually kind of interweave that with the gameplay in an interesting way that I'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, by and large, the narrative is something that you will decide your level of engagement on. You can find out pretty much most of what's going on here, what's going on with the city, why you are being um, targeted by whom, what else is going on, what the dangers are, what the source of that is. You'll find pretty much all that out, if not in specifics, at the very least in the broad strokes. You'll learn all this as you go. But you don't know any of it when you start. Uh, Gameplay-wise, overall, it's interesting. It So, hmm. the actual system used for combat is actually... It, it's intuitive, but it's also very complicated to try to explain to anybody. Short version is, you, as you get through the game, you acquire new abilities that do different things depending on how you equip them. What I mean by that is, you have, if you're using a controller, you have on your four face buttons, those are your four primary actions, and you assign something to each of those buttons. Anything from a standard melee attack, ranged attack, a support thing, go invisible, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all those sorts of things. But any you, but you can also modify any of those actions with another ability. So, for instance, you it, later on you acquire an explosive ability, which you can basically put on to something like your melee attack to just have it do a lot more damage. Later on, you'll open up passive slots. Um, where you can put something in that will give you just a permanent passive ability. It might be a buff to uh, to offense, to defense, it might give you a bonus every now and then, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. As I said, there's a lot of ins and outs of this, but here's one of the ways in which it the game through its story, which was my initial hook, like the gameplay's it's good. The gameplay never put me off. Let's put it that way. But I was more in it for the story and the intrigue and the atmosphere of it. But if that's what you're in for. And, like, if you're into mechanics, there's a lot to, to sort of dig into. But if you're more into story, they've actually found a way to make you engage more with the mechanics and fully um, try everything out just based on story. And what I mean by that is each ability you acquire, it basically... Oh God. Explaining the story reason for this is weird. Long story short, it comes with information on a person in the city. And... Finding out what's going on, it helps to know what happened to these people. And you unlock, there's basically three tiers of information about each individual that's tied to a certain ability. You unlock each tier of that information by putting that ability in all three possible slots. So use it as a primary, you've unlocked the basic information. 
Use it as a support on another ability, you've unlocked more information. Use it as a passive, well, you've used it in all three capabilities. You now have the full information about these people. And getting the full information about these people is how you get the full information about what is going on. So if you're engaged with the story, the way you get the story is not by hunting down documents and audio logs. It's by engaging with the combat and the mechanics and using them in as many permutations as possible, encouraging you to experiment and possibly stumble upon certain combinations of things in your ability loadout that you might not have tried otherwise, simply so that you get more info. And that is really cool and really clever. I thought that was quite well done. Um, aesthetically, it's just, it's cyberpunk adjacent, I think is what I go with. Um, like, it's not as, uh, cyberpunk has a tendency to be a little bit more dark and noirish. It's at least initially a bit more sort of bright and hopeful than that. Um, uh, almost kind of unidealized. It's like a, visually it's a little bit like an art deco cyberpunk thing, but like, this isn't a dystopia. At least it doesn't appear to be. And, uh, that, that is a really cool aesthetic. Um, much like with Bastion, pretty much all the dialogue, not all of it, but the vast majority of the dialogue is a voiceover, whereas in Bastion, it was a narrator. Here, it's actually your primary weapon, which is the titular transistor. It's It talks to you and kind of communicates with you. And one of the things that's interesting is your character of Red, she has lost her voice, so she doesn't speak. But they ha they do find some interesting ways for her to communicate with the transistor. So one of the things that's going on in the city is that there's these terminals that are either giving out news stories, alert bulletins, or having votes from citizens like, what color do you want the sky tomorrow? Because they have the, the ability to control that. And when you go to any of these terminals and you read the stuff, at the bottom, there's a place for comments. And what'll happen is Red, the character you're playing, will write out a comment. And one of the things they start doing later is she uses that comment section to communicate with the transistor because she'll start to write something out, not post that comment, delete it, and then write something again, delete it, write something again. They do this actually for two different things. One is you can sort of see a stream of thought where she's like, I'll write this, no, that's no good. I'll write this, no, that's no good. Or other times she like just flat out uses it to talk to the transistor since she doesn't currently have a voice. And both of which are really interesting. And it's not um, an especially long game. It has a, a new game plus basically, which I haven't uh, really dug into. So I don't know if that uh, brings in more story aspects, uh, but I have beaten it. And I kind of want to talk about the ending and something that was really, really cool about it that um, just kind of the the handful of people who watched me play it on stream heard me ruminate about this uh, right after it happened. So I am going to talk a bit about the ending. I'm not going to go into super specifics about it, but just in kind of the broad strokes of some of the things, you might at least get a sense of the tone of the ending. So you can decide if that's more of a spoiler than you want. If you've played any other Supergiant games, if you like isometric and involved combat based, combat based, combat based game play, I would recommend checking it out, especially if you can get it on sale, which is pretty much how I buy any game these days. I put together a wish list on Steam, wait for something to go on sale. <laughs> that's, that's how I have most of my, my library on there. But uh, I am going to recommend it. So that's your warning. Here's the thing about the ending. At the end, after I've completed the gameplay aspect of the end, Red, who again is the player character, makes a choice. And it was a choice that I didn't get to make. The character made it. And it was a choice that, I'm not going to say made no sense, but didn't make immediate sense. And I could think of a number of possible interpretations as to why she would have made that choice. But what that made me realize is that 
while Red is my avatar within this game, she's not me. And the way the game has been set up and the narrative has been set up, I don't get as much insight into her as I've kind of been assuming that I had. And there's a bit of a disconnect between player and player character that I think was deliberate, where at the end, she makes a choice that you kind of have to on your on your own figure out, why did she do that? Because it's not immediately apparent why. And I'm not even sure I have the definitive answer as to why. But it really fascinated me when I realized how little I actually know her. I know the things she did. I was in control of her. But I never knew her thoughts. Not really. I got the tiniest glimpses. So while I made a lot of assumptions about her motives, partially inspired by the voice of the transistor, which is narrating this thing, and assuming that it was voicing an opinion in alignment with Red's and assuming that, but then getting to the end and realizing, okay, I know what she's been doing. I don't know why. I don't know what drives her. I don't know what her passions are. I know what I've read about her. I know what other characters have said about her. I know what, I've, what she's done under my control, but I don't actually know her. And what's cool is that feels like a feature, not a bug. No part of the ending felt like that was something I was supposed to understand, but the game failed. I'm hoping, and I suspect, given the uh, output of the studio that I've played elsewhere, I suspect it's purposeful to leave you in a state where you need to figure out who this person actually was that you've been playing for however many hours as. Because you thought you knew, but maybe you didn't. And I just thought that was really, really cool. This company's just great at finding ways to integrate the story and the gameplay, sometimes in um, more straightforward ways, like basically withholding uh, character data until you try out new things, sometimes through... Um, you know, just giving you incentive to, you know, talk to all the various characters in a game like Hades. They find ways to very seamlessly integrate the way the narrative is told through the things that happen in a video game in a way that wouldn't work in a book or a TV show or a movie. It's not to say that these stories that they tell in video games couldn't be told in in other mediums, but they couldn't be told the same way. And I find that fascinating. Transistor. Did you ever play it? What did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. My Patreon is where you can support me. Uh, If you want to see me play games on Twitch, you'll find a link down in the description as well as links to other things that I do as well. Um, Even if you have neither the time nor the inclination for any of that, like, share, subscribe, help me out as well. But don't worry too much about it. We take a uh, relaxed attitude around here, so you can just come on back next time you need a break. Hey, end credits time, which means I need to shout out some patrons. This time I'm going to be shouting out Robin Moore, Zubin Lutfala, Tarak, Oliver B, Melinda Walters, Imudelki, the Oath of Boy, TT, Renobulax the Poodle, Zach Paul, Eidolon, Tracy Scrabbit, Vincent Paul Bartolucci, Angry Casperl, Toku BL Huvian, Adam RDL Taylor, Shane Ross, Shayla Gourlay, and Brendan LaRose. You want to hear me mispronounce your name? Check out rewards on the Patreon. Thanks for all your support.